Welcome to the Buffalo Plus channel presented by Connors and Ferris. Mike Catalana, Dan Fates. I am Jenna Cottrell. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy our content. All right, we were talking the five players to watch in this Bills Raiders matchup. Uh, the Raiders 1 0 to start mm -hmm. the season. The Bills are 0 and 1. It's the home opener for Buffalo. Dan, Mike, Josh Allen is <laughs> yeah. going to be player number one. This doesn't usually happen. No, it doesn't. Right? Josh no. is not the guy. I mean, we're always watching Josh Allen. He never really has to be looked at that way. You expect a certain level of really good, yep. and then sometimes it's great. Well, it's not great. It was not great in the first game. He needs a bounce-back game. Introspectively, Dan, I think he's saying to himself, number one, i got to be better. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is he knows he's got to be better. Does he believe he's got to be different starting on Sunday? Great question. Yeah. Uh, does he mm. change? Can yeah. men change? <laughs> I beat you. Do it again. Yeah. That is the big question because I think you're always going to have a little bit of this. Chris Long joked around about that the Josh Allen experience is, <laughs> is, is a carnival ride operated by a drunk carny. Like, yeah. like you don't really know what you're going to get. You get some awesome plays like the Stefan Diggs touchdown, and then you get some really bad plays to go along with it. When Josh is good, he limits those pressing all the buttons, and he's not optioning it down the field to Latavius Murray. Things got out of hand. It spiraled out of control a little bit last week. Rein it in. Understand that when you have the ball in your hands, you have everybody's job in your hands. Dan Orlovsky talked about a story on One Bills Live that Gary Kubiak, his coach at the time, told him that when you have the ball in your hands, it's not just your job. It's my job. It's everyone's jobs. It's the organization's hope. It's the fans' dreams. All of those things are in the ball, in your hands, and you just need to take care of it yeah and this is something we talked about all of season it's something that josh talked about yeah and he knows it it's, he it's year knows six it, of course and he knows it he just knows he's got to do it now when the raiders are in their locker room on sunday morning you know what they're talking about yeah get the ball from josh allen 17 will give it up i told we'll you guys yep. about this it's a lot of times it's running backs i remember fred jackson yeah. saying that you don't want your name up on the wall yeah. where they're saying 22 and fred did not fumble never so we're not talking about fred but you don't want your name up there because once that happens, they start going for the ball. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Raiders are trying to strip the ball out of his hands. Fumbled a lot last year. Yeah. We know it. That was an issue. Already started out with a bad fumble that cost yeah. them. The turnovers in the passing game, defensive backs. The Raiders have some young, aggressive players yeah. that can be beat, but they can make plays too. So Raiders come into that game going, we know Josh Allen can make plays. We also know we can get the ball out of his hands. We don't really see a lot of back-to-back -back bad Josh mm -hmm. Allen yeah. games, and I think that's something where this week all the criticism on him yeah. and kind of the feedback that maybe he's honestly not used to hearing, and I think that is actually going to help things sink in because it's one thing to get a lot of attention, but it's another thing to get it being like, you need to be better, you need to be smarter, all the clips on Twitter. Yeah. And guys can say, I don't, I don't see that. I'm not on social media. I don't believe that. Yeah. You see it. You feel it. You hear it. And I think Josh Allen is going to absorb and be better. Jenna, it's funny how the pendulum has swung back and forth over the last few years. Because first it was, he's a bust. And then all of a sudden yeah. it was like, oh, he's really good. He's this elite. He's an MVP caliber quarterback. And all those people that were wrong had to eat crow. And they had to say, I was wrong. And now the pendulum has swung back. And those people are oh. coming back to do a victory lap from their grave. Oh, my God. They're the Undertaker <laughs> meme. And they're shooting up and they're going, see, I was right. Oh. This is Josh Allen. Bouncing back. This is this would be so Josh to have a phenomenal performance. Absolutely. And to have I expect to show that. to show his restraint, to show his accuracy and his competitiveness all on the same stage and have a massive performance. I, I love the guy now who's saying, I told you I, so. I was right a yeah. year ago. Yeah. Or Off year of one. A game. Yeah. yeah. But that being said, yeah. he's gotta be better. Yes. And I think he he's does. gotta be different. And I'm holding out the hope that men can change. I believe men can change. <laughs> I do. Clip that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I might take it back at yeah. some points, but no. Uh, someone else who needs to be better or at least show up a little bit more in terms of the box score, Gabe Davis. And we've yep. talked about the Bills needing secondary receivers. He had a couple catches in the game against the Jets. Um, that's someone that we've talked about a lot this offseason of can he kind of step into that number two role? Can he be that guy to kind of help alleviate some of the pressure on Stephon Diggs? And we didn't see that against the Jets. That doesn't mean it won't happen, though. Uh, but at the same point, you want him to kind of take 
take that step forward and be another viable option. And we can kind of mix in, you know, Dalton Kincaid in this as well. But these guys needing to step up and help out in terms of the offense. Gabe's getting a second shot to be the number two guy, he is. right? And, and, and this being said, I think he can rise to that. I yeah. really do believe that. And we'll see by the end of the season. Yeah. But my thought process is we need to see it sooner rather than later. Yeah, you need it. And they need that second men guy. Men can and change, Dan. <laughs> men can change. Um, Takes but, can't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see. Let's see what happens. You know, Gabe, Gabe had a nice play in the game. I, they did not get that many targets in, this, in yep. this first game. So let's see what happens in this one. But I think it can be very valuable. Look, I love 13 passes going to Diggs because 100%. Diggs is your guy. Yeah. But... You'd like to see Gabe be open for six or eight passes, make five catches, maybe five for 70 yards. Look at that. That's the number we always want. Five for the love <laughs> of all humanity. Can there otherwise, be a he, has I hope he has exactly five Otherwise, he has three years. for 164, whatever he does, or the 200-yard yeah. game against the Chiefs. Yeah. We're not looking for another. We're not looking for another Diggs. We're not looking for another Batman. We're yeah. looking for a Robin. Yes. Like somebody to do that. Like, I do. I do love that analogy. We got Superman. We got Batman, and we need Robin. That's it. Yeah. It just five for seventy. Let's see. Please. Okay. Well, what would help him? Mike Evans. What? No. What would help all of them <laughs> is the third team, the third place. Oh, the uh, offensive line. Okay, sorry. I wanted one more note. Oh. oh, I think Dalton Kincaid, he handled the pressure well in his debut. Yeah. That was a very tough environment to play in at MetLife Stadium. Kudos to Jets fans. Um, but I think he handled the pressure well, and I expect him to be a piece in this offense going mm -hmm. forward. And I thought he did well under the yeah. pressure. And maybe that, that role will, will continue to grow with the fact that he showed up the way yeah. he did. Well, they certainty played enough. Two tight end yeah. offense, so yeah. he's going to get snaps. Up. All right, we'll go on to the offensive line. I'm yeah. scared. I did Max not Crosby. think the offensive line was terrible against the Jets. I didn't think they were terrible. I agree. I didn't Five think they sacks. were great. Which yeah. some of those were? Yeah, because it wasn't for a yeah. ton of yards because it's a lot of times Josh taking off. Yeah. That doesn't mean they're all on him. The, the right side, um, look, Quinton Williams was on that defense. He's yeah. a beast. Yeah, he's really Max good. Crosby is too. They are going to put a lot of pressure on a rookie, mm -hmm. and on a struggling right tackle. Um, so let's see what ends up happening in the game. But, yeah, the line always needs to be better. But let's see what they do in week two. Saw a lot of fire, a lot of intensity out of Spencer Brown after the whistle. I would like to see it before the whistle. He's always ready to fight. He's always ready to fight. How about we fight during those five seconds the play's going? Yeah. He, he was is. on the ground a lot. He got tabletop down to Josh Allen for a sack. It, I... I just don't want to be talking about the offensive line anymore. I just want an offensive line that we don't even we don't even know their names because we don't talk about it because <laughs> they're not getting know beat. their names. I will yeah. say just something to note: Mitch Hogs. Morris was on the injury report with a finger yeah. injury, but he's been practicing full. in full, yeah, so I don't ex I don't expect that to be a thing. Yeah. But just wanted to note that. All right, let's talk defense players to watch. Trey White. Trey. Look, I went back and looked at that play multiple, multiple times. You had a great shot of it on the sidelines. Didn't Good you? job. No. no, that was not. No, it was the network <laughs> take. The I want to give him credit. You had a great for shot a, of the Diggs touchdown. I, I thought that was the one shot that I got done. I said, I didn't get it. And you well, had no problem. You're like, so I thought that was a janity. No, no, That was no. just a senior moment? So, <gasps> no, I was giving you credit. I think you get all the shots. So, Dan got a lot of good ones. He didn't get that one. Get that Let me one. tell you, you know who you else didn't get shots. it was Trey White. But I got to tell you, when I saw it again, what a play yeah, by Garrett Wilson. Phenomenal. Trey was right there. It was one of those plays, I could say. But... You got Devontae Adams roaming around. He is, okay, yeah. what is he? Top five. Top, top three, top five, whatever yeah. you want to say about yeah, he's him. A good he's playing now with Jimmy G. He was playing with Derek Carr last year. He had Aaron Rodgers before that. When he had Rodgers, he was all-world player. He's still really good. Yeah. He can go out there and make plays for you. I just want to see Trey elevate this defense, yeah. right? If we get in a good pass rush, if they can do a little better job on the run, and I know we're going to talk about that, I want to see Trey be the number one guy. He may never be top all pro, level yeah. all pro again, but I think he can still be their number one guy. I, I agree. I want to see him get some wins. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like like inner like personally for him in some of those battles because I think that also just obviously that helps your confidence as well. Yeah. We know the player Trey White can be, and having some of those small wins in the battles along the way certainly helps. I'm looking at the entire secondary. I thought Christian Bedford played well, but I'm also looking at Jordan Boyer, who I thought maybe had one of his worst games of his career in Buffalo, looking for him to bounce back. Micah Hyde, I think, was still, you know, getting some rust out there after not being around for uh, for all of last season. And again, 
I love this too. We've talked about this on the channel. And Jenna, I think it was after the Pittsburgh game okay. that we sat here and everybody was like, oh my goodness, the Pittsburgh game was so bad in the preseason. Everybody has talked this week about how the preseason didn't matter and that this was the first real test. That week one was the first time that they actually took live reps. So yes, that's me patting myself on the back for a take that I had correct, but it was also oh, because- Oh, no. It was also Are you because, kidding me? Yeah. Wow. Preseason doesn't matter. And everybody has Go proven it. Okay. Just, just. Yeah. Uh, preseason doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't matter. Some Steelers those, were phenomenal those, in the preseason. Yeah. Some of those issues, okay, they played, they played the 49ers. Okay. Yeah, but they scored like five touchdowns on five drives in the preseason. And everybody's and like, they're great. Waxed yeah, by the did. Niners. I think the Niners are the very, very good. The preseason doesn't matter. So week one is the preseason. Hopefully everybody got oh it off. God. Okay. Like, wow, like circling back to, I think that it's not that, I don't think the preseason doesn't matter. It just, it, obviously it's the preseason. It the doesn't matter, matter as much as yeah. the regular season, but still, yeah. I think the Bills showed a lot of rust and I can't imagine if they didn't have the preseason to at least help yeah. out in some of that capacity. All right, now I'm annoyed. <laughs> Mission um, accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, let's talk uh, our last player or position we should talk about. We do all like each other. That's the funny thing. We yeah. do, yeah. We have spent a lot of time, though, together this yeah, week. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> a five-hour drive back. a lot of us back. putting up with Jenna, but we've done all right. <laughs> I am the, in uh, I'm the elite passenger princess in oh, the back no of the kidding. car on the way yeah. from MetLife. Okay, um, Ed Oliver, Daquan Jones. Yeah, run defense. It's yeah. got to be better. Josh yeah. Jacobs Integrity. Is yeah. It is funny that everybody says it's the Greg Williams line about the defense, the run defense was pretty good, except for that one run. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he went 140 yards on that run, yeah. like whatever, I circling was the rest around. Of the time, Mrs. Yes, you do, you cannot allow those big plays. Some of that's certainly on Jordan Poyer. Yep. Bad angle, happened in the preseason too, I think it was in Chicago. Poyer will be fine, a little rusty in the beginning, but the D-line's got to win at the point of attack. Yeah. Stop the run game, make Jimmy G throw the ball, then let that pass rush attack, I think, would make a big difference. And Daquan Jones has always been good. Ed Oliver, yeah. impactful in the game, but it was more on the outside that we saw. That's big for, a big game for them against the Raiders. Agreed. All right, Dan, your predictions for this game? I think it's uncomfortably close. I think the Bills still need to work on some things. I think the offense, I would love to see them look coordinated for an <laughs> offense this week to get some points and to put drives together. I just think that Max Crosby can really be a problem for this Bills offensive line. I know their secondary has holes in it, and they should be able to exploit it, but we, we're just not sure yet if what this offense is. And this isn't just a one-game overreaction to the Jets game. This is a bigger picture that's been going on. This is no longer a new offensive coordinator and a new play caller, and this isn't a new system. This is a lot of the same things that you have thrown out last year that you're still trying to figure out. I think the Bills get the win, I think it's a little bit close, too close for comfort. They don't cover, but they get the win 23-20. Okay. What? Nothing. Nothing. You were yeah. thorough. Yeah, it was, it was good. very thorough. It was great. <laughs> when I can just like see this and I'm like, I, what, what, I got a booger hanging out? Like I'm just like, this isn't good. I'm like, what did I miss up? No. Am I second here? Or no, I'm yeah, second. Go ahead. I don't even remember what I picked, but I know I have the Bills winning this game. Yeah. Um, I have the score being I think 21-16. Yeah. Rusty, am I right? Yes. Right. Okay, so I have it being 21-16. I think this is a bounce-back effort for this Bills team. It's the home opener. I think the Bills absolutely want to get that bad taste of the Jets' loss out of their mouth. I don't think it's going to be perfect by any stretch, but at the same point, I think this is the offense we see. Josh Allen being smarter with the football, not making some of those reckless decisions. I think this offense will be efficient. Josh Allen taking the cheese and then things opening up from there. It's not an offensive explosion, but at the same point, the Bills winning this game, and at the end of the day, that is what matters. Yeah. 21-16, Bills get their first win of the season. And while I would love to see the, the offense go crazy, Josh Allen throw five touchdowns, I don't expect that. But look, a win is a win. Yeah. I think get right in this game is winning the game. The Bills need a win. Bad loss against the Jets, division loss. It's a conference game. Go ahead and beat the Raiders. Get it done. I think the Raiders are a talented team. They come in happy, 1-0, yep. thinking we can go and steal one in Buffalo. Josh Allen is down. We can take advantage of that. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the Bills are the better team. And even though it's September, the more desperate team in week number two. I've got the Bills winning it 27-20. We're calling it a must win for us. We all had a loss in week one. We're looking to get a bounce back win. Yes. So we're going to say Bill's Put me win. in, coach. Yes. <laughs>
All right, thank you for joining us. Please be sure to like, uh, comment your prediction in this game or which players you're looking out for, as well as subscribe. And share with a friend yes. if you enjoy our channel. Also, check out the Buffalo Plus store, buffaloplus.com. You can get your mug that says Dan is wrong. Uh, if you buy over $25 worth of stuff... Dan you, pays for it. For the shipping. <laughs> you get free shipping. Really? Yeah. Buffaloplusstore.com. BuffaloPlusStore.com. Oh, Didn't I say that? Yeah, you might uh, have kept score uh, out of there. That's fine. Buffalo Plus Store. You just said score. Buffalo Dude, Plus Store. store. Com. Check also, it out. I love it when we do stuff in here and people go, man, your this studio is incredible. Really nice. We work at a TV hey, stage. Yeah. Like, comment, subscribe. Right. We, we can get so a bigger studio. We're working on that. We're working on that. All right. Um, buy a warehouse. Uh, yeah, thank you for joining us. For Mike and Dan, I am Jenna. We will catch you next time. <laughs> I'm just here by myself. I'm Buffalo Plus.